Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun, where we are looking at a game that has two of those things. Halo Infinite has lots of rocks and a rather hefty new shotgun. There might be paper on that Halo ring somewhere too, but the best way to find out is to ask Matthew, who got to listen in in some behind the scenes chat about the game. Some behind the scenes chat where we got to ask a few questions to get a bit more information. So Matthew, this Halo Infinite demo was part of the big Xbox Series X showcase, but it is very much a PC game too. Well, I'd say this is exactly a PC game. Uh, as I found out in our little behind the scenes chat, this was captured on a PC mimicking what to expect from Xbox Series X. So this is okay. Halo Infinite on a PC, but it's quite a shiny opportunity to see their new Slipstream engine in action. They obviously debuted at E3 two years ago with some lovely open world vistas. It made me wonder, are they going to be doing a big open world Halo? And it turns out they are sort of doing that by applying modern tech to the iconic imagery of Halo 1. And that iconic imagery you mentioned, that does seem to be very important. They keep talking about going back to basics with this one. The buzzword that they're using a lot is spiritual reboot. So they really want to kind of tap into that nostalgia burst of stepping out onto the Halo ring for the first time in Halo 1. They show Moss Chief stepping out of this ship and it's the modern version of what that site would look like. Everything in this game is really rooted in that nostalgia. I think they're trying to speak to old players who maybe miss that kind of thing, but they're also trying to give that wow moment uh, to people who didn't play Halo 1, which is obviously a lot of people because it was a long time mm. ago. And to hammer that home, they've basically built a Halo newcomer into the game, who's this guy, the pilot. He's just there to go up and say, what's that? And have Master Chief say, I'm going to kill it, or whatever he says. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that famous catchphrase. Oh, yeah. listen, I, uh, I'm, I'm hoping the writing's better than that. What I quite like is that they describe this pilot character as the most human character uh, they've ever created, which is good, as I sometimes find the Halo cast a little cold, a little unknowable in a sci-fi way, although actually saying that uh, one of the previous characters was Nathan Fillion, who was obviously one of the most warm uh, personalities around. Bit of a burn on Nathan Fillion as well to say that this new character is the most human, but... Uh, so, so we're not getting Nathan Fillion in this one. No. Uh, or maybe, maybe, maybe he turns up later. Who knows? Uh, but we, we do get the next best thing, which is a brand new Halo ring to explore. They keep saying we've given you a fully realized Halo ring, which I think when you hear that, you go, wow, I have an entire ring to explore. That's really exciting. But in the demo, what it largely seems to mean is... It looks like the Halo ring you know and love, but there's a bit more life in it, as in it has lots of birds. Terrific. Halo as directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed this in the demo, but there are lots of shots of like birds artfully taking off in front of sunsets, and when you're going up on a lift, a load, up, of, up in the lift, yeah. a load yeah. of birds fly by. Uh, you know, I was wondering what, what the infinite of the title was. I mean, it could be the, the ring, of course, or it could just be that there is an infinite number of birds. Hmm. All right, so how open is this world then? Are we talking Far Cry Halo edition or more like the open world segments? And believe you me, I'm saying that with air quotes of Gears 5. And for starters, they say this section takes place roughly four hours into the game. Uh, which is where they say it really opens up, which suggests that for those first four hours, it won't be like this. It's close. Final Fantasy thirteen. I thought the other interesting thing, so we did ask them about how open it is. Paul Croker, the associate creative director at 343, said that the game is still intrinsically Halo. Our goal wasn't to make other types of game that you've seen, it was to make the best Halo experience. I feel like he is talking about your kind of Far Cry's, your first person open world games. They said there's a lot of stuff in the game that comes from your memories of classic Halo, specifically like the way we join up spaces, the kind of places you might find your secrets. That to me does feel like there will be maybe linear levels that join them. That is a key part of Halo, it's not just bombing around in a warthog. So I know that Infinite has this big map, but when I was looking at the gameplay, wasn't really littered in icons like a Ubisoft map and there is a happy medium of course between giving players something to do and just a lot of busy work so 
was there any talk of side quests? Well, the map that they focus, which is called the TAC map, does show the three locations for a very specific mission. Uh, there is a very brief glimpse of the map in the footage, which shows the wider map with lots of icons on it. Okay. While it does look like the landscape is kind of chopped into sort of almost like islands with these big kind of canyons between them, you know, there is a whole world of icons out there. <laughs> uh, Terrific, yes! <laughs> I know, few. Uh, there's an icon that says Marine Rescue. There's a target symbol with the name Okro Vagadun. Ooh. Uh, and I wonder if that might be like an optional assassination side task or something. But I am interested in the relationship between like the side missions and the main missions because when you select the mission on this map to take out these gun turrets, it shows a difficulty icon. It's got the normal difficulty with like a tick box next to it. And there are a set number of collectibles, which to me suggests it's a self-contained thing that we'll be able to replay. Like, can we come back to the missions and do them on legendary, heroic, you know, etc, etc. You know, when they were talking to IGN, 343 said that you would be able to travel back to early areas to hoover up collectibles, find other secrets, which suggests it will be quite a free-flowing environment. So you mentioned collectibles, and one thing people associate with open-worldly games is a RPG-like character progression. Now, when I was watching it, I didn't see numbers popping off of baddies or a level going up, but did you see any sign of that, or was there any mention of that? The team said that there'll be lots of secrets and things to find. I didn't say what. I mean, famously... Halo had the skulls that kind of unlocked cheat modes and extra difficulty challenges and some of those were amazingly well hidden even in those linear levels of the earlier games so I'd actually love to see what they could do with fiendish skull placement you know in this huge landscape. Um, the thing that they do talk about is equipment and upgrades. It's not a skill tree, it's not an XP driven system but they are things you find it sounds a bit like Halo 3 in terms of the kinds of gadgets. So for example, okay. you can get drop shield, which counters grenades, uh, and you can also place it down and then hide behind it to recover your shields, uh, which is now quite a hectic honeycomb effect. I don't know if you noticed this, um, but yeah. whenever yeah, yeah. I see these big yellow things pop up on screen, it makes me think of honeycomb, which then makes me think of Cadbury's Crunchies and makes me hungry. There is also a grapple shot, because what game isn't better without a grapple hook? You know, it gives you access to new locations. It lets you choose how to approach combat. You know, in this demo, they whip up this cliff so that they can attack this turret from behind. You can also use it to grapple yourself to enemies. You can use it to pull equipment to you, both guns and uh, things like these big explodey barrels that you can chuck. But there is an upgrades tab on the attack map. And people have noted that things like the radar, for example, in the bottom corner has a set range on it. So maybe we'll be able to improve that with upgrades. You know, I'd be interested to see if they do add kind of tangible improvements. I was going to ask which version of Master Chief is this? Is it back to basics of Halo 1? Or does he have all the ground pounds and air dashes and all the fancy stuff he had in Halo 5? Well, apparently this is quite a controversial topic, uh, which I was unaware oh. of because I'm more of a Halo dabbler rather than a zealot. Uh, mm -hmm. But it sounds like they're in a nightmare situation because 343 are trying to balance what legacy fans want against what shooter fans enjoy in the present day, what they expect from modern shooting games. Uh, and then you also have what you want in campaign and multiplayer is also going to be very different, which is a very long way of saying that the game does have sprint, which seems to be the big thing. Yes. The community, some elements of the community don't like. I mean, no. <laughs> because it messes with multiplayer a lot changes the map design, changes the entire dynamic of the thing. In a sandboxy campaign where you're exploring a massive landscape, you know, you want tiers of movement speed, you probably want that extra control. So it's going to be interesting to see exactly what's in there. Like, they didn't give us the specifics. We did ask about the ground pound and the air dashes, stuff mm -hmm. that isn't seen in the, in, in the gameplay. It doesn't mean it's not there, um, but they didn't say either way, really. You know, they were just talking about trying to balance this character that would work for newcomers and experienced fans and campaign and multiplayer. 
And again, if this is back to basics, what does this mean for the enemies? Uh, see, I was looking at the footage, I, I didn't see any of those Promethean dog creatures. The big thing is that the Brutes are back, who are last seen in yes. Halo Reach as playable enemies. They're the, sort of the big thuggish boys, they kind of get up close personal, they're a bit more aggressive. Uh, this is technically mm. uh, the faction of the Banished, who are the enemies in Halo Wars 2. And in this, they are headed up by Asharam, who is this scary chap who lectures you at the end of the demo. He's actually voiced by the guy who voiced uh, Samuel Hayden in Doom. Oh, uh, nice. Apparently. But yeah, they're back in the mix. Really, everything in this demo felt like very classic Halo enemy design to me. Like, the, even just the visual designs seemed sort of back to, back to basics. Um, they have changed in some ways, though. Uh, the Brutes, they can throw grunts at you, which is quite fun. There's also sort of enemy behaviours to make them feel a bit more realistic in this environment. So, for example, if you sneak into bases, you'll see, like, the jackals, when they're on alert, they don't have their shields, and they pop up, which is a nice little touch. You can also shoot people in their legs when they're running towards you, and they stumble a bit, so they seem a bit more reactive. Interestingly, Jerry Hook, who's the head of design on the game, also suggested that enemies can use the new equipment that Master Chief's getting against him. Ooh. I don't know if that means they're going to be using grappling hooks to zip around or if that just means they'll have drop shields of their own, but yeah. they've added more sandboxy elements. They want the combat to sort of feel a bit more emergent from what they were saying. I also asked them about whether by going back to basics means they'll be bringing back the flood, uh, the notorious sort of zombie creatures from the original trilogy. Not that I'm a big fan of the flood. I, I fucking hate them actually. But I was interested if, if, if that's part of the original DNA. And again, they were completely stum said. They said that we were going to meet lots of new characters, but they didn't want to sort of spoil any story surprises about other returning elements. I would be interested to see the flood done with modern tech to see them as this like overwhelming force. A bit like those zombies and that. What was the PlayStation Zombies game? Days Gone? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. You know, just an overwhelming sea of flesh coming at you. That could be interesting, but they said, who knows? And it's a mystery that'll hopefully be cleared up pretty quickly, as this is due out before the end of the year to coincide with the launch of Xbox Series X. Although, as mentioned, we'll be playing it on PC and doing it for the price of an Xbox Game Pass subscription, which is always nice. Thank you, Matthew, for revealing the secrets of your ring. My pleasure. And thank you, dear viewer, for watching this video. And how do you feel about Halo Infinite? Has it re-energized your shield or is it as appealing as a plasma grenade to the face? Do let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun. If you need more convincing, check out some of our recent game chats popping up on screen right now. Do give them a click and we'll hopefully see you again soon. Say bye, Matthew. Goodbye. And bye from me. Goodbye.